Hello YouTubers, today I want to talk to you about um, the definition of programming. What is programming? What is computer programming? And why do we need um, to learn programming? Um, the first important thing to me is to actually understand what programming means. What, what, what does it stand for? Programming basically is describing the behavior of something. So let's say, for instance, you know, if if you have a scenario of um, uh, you describing a, a game, for instance, and you want to say, well, in that game, you have to go through the maze in order for you to be able to 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 win in that game or to to, to reach the end point. So you want to describe certain behaviors that when it, when I click on the button that's above, it will go above, and when I click down, it will go down, it will go right and left and so on and so forth. Um, so programming is basically is the, the 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 process of describing a certain behavior. You want something to behave in a certain way. Uh, regardless what this thing is. Uh, computer programming, however, is this to tell the computer to describe a certain behavior that you want the computer to behave based on. So just like when you have a friend and you're trying to explain to a friend, you know, how to, to play a certain game, so you're basically letting your friend know about a certain behaviors he needs to know in order for them to be able to play a certain game. The same thing goes to a computer. So in order for you to have the computer behaves in a certain way, you have to speak to the computer in a certain language. And this is where the whole idea of programming languages came from. You're trying to understand a language that the computer can understand uh, so you could get the computer to behave in a way that you desire. Um, now, the question is, why programming? Why do we need to learn programming? What do we get out of that? What do I get out of making the computer that behaves in a way that I want? Um, in our daily lives, there are certain tasks that could be uh, more efficiently handled by the computer. For instance, let's say you, you have a restaurant. And in that restaurant, you want to remind yourself of of certain events where there will be a very very high demand on the restaurants like holidays weekends you know end of the year whatever these events are you could use the computer to describe a behavior for the computer to program the computer to remind you of these events and when the computer reminds you of these events you will act upon this reminder so you don't have to, you know, keep track of the calendar every day so you would figure out, you know, when is an important event is about to happen. You could even program the computer to remind you X number of days ahead of time so you and your staff members on that restaurant, in that restaurant, be prepared for that certain event. So that's one way. Also, like, there are so many different ways you could use the computer to uh, help you, enable you to perform certain tasks more efficiently. So the whole point about programming, it's not, there are so many, so many different programming languages, computer programming languages out there. Uh, the whole point of this video is not to uh, have you focus on the technology or the language itself. It's about focusing on the goal, the end goal for this, um, for learning programming. Let's say, for instance, you went to uh, France and you want to learn French, not for French itself, but in order for you to be able to describe a certain behavior or a certain need to the people in France. So you want to be able to speak the language, not for the language itself, but you want to achieve another goal behind that, which is to achieve a certain level of communications to achieve certain goals through that communication. Um, it's the same thing with computers. So you're learning a computer programming language uh, in order for you to communicate with the computer to get the computer to behave in a certain way. 
So that's really all that is. That's what programming is about. So let's take an example here of so the main the main purpose here is that you want to you want to know how to resemble the real world into a computer program in order for the computer to be able to help you achieve a certain task. Uh, the real challenge here is not to get too involved in the details in the real world and I'm going to show you an example of that. Uh, th the real challenge here is to just get what you need to extract what you need out of the real world model into a simpler model in order for the computer to be able to perform the tasks that you need. So let's say let's go let's go to amazon.com. Let's say you have an inventory of things like this. So you have things like uh, cables and whatnot and you all the main purpose here is that you want to keep track of the items that are running out. So in that particular behavior, you all what you care about is to know which item that is running out and how many are left. So what we really, really care about is the name of the item as a unique identifier for each and every item in your store and how many are left. That's all. There are pictures, there are ratings, there are prices, there are is it prime or not. We don't want to worry about that because that doesn't really benefit you in your model. What really benefits you and you to solve your problem is to understand how many items are left. So let's think about something here called abstraction, meaning you're trying to find a common thing between all items to describe these items in a model. So each and every item in here they have a title and they have a, 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 a the the amount of them left in the inventory so these are two things that identify items the title or the name of the item and how many are left in that item in the inventory that's all that you need to know about so that describes properties of that model that you want to um, uh, resemble in your computer program so let's start our IDE in here let's see how we can resemble our problem um, and our real world and then introduce our problem to the computer uh, through that behavior so here we go So I'm going to start here with a console application um, to understand how to, uh, to, to, to write a program that helps me understand uh, my problem here. So let's start with the model. So our model here, let's say, let's call it inventory item. So I'm just going to build a class. And let's call that class inventory item. So in each inventory item, there is a title. So that's a string title or name, the name of that item. And there is how many are left. So uh, let's say count. And what we want to know and what we want to accomplish here is to, you know, let the computer gives us a warning that when there are not as many inventory items to tell us, be careful, you know, you're running out of those. So let's say when there's only like three items left, the computer should warn us. So let's go here and create a bunch of items. So let's go here and say, this is the first inventory item, let's say uh, cables cable and this inventory item the name of it is cable 
and we have the count of 20. We have another inventory item that is a, um, um, let's see, adapter. And this adapter name is adapter. And we have 10 of these, right? So what we have now in our store, in our uh, uh, inventory, we have two products, a cable, cables and adapters. And we have 20 of these and 10 of these. So now I resembled my real world problem through uh, implementing that model. So now what we want to do is an interactive thing with with the outside world. So we're going to build a console application that says okay, what item would you like to buy? So whatever item the end user wants to buy it shows a projection of the whole sky which surrounds us the spherical sky so it's like a map from an atlas and uh, the pattern it shows is the pattern of the variations in the density across the sky those variations in densities create a variation in temperature and so whatever the, the the item is we go look for that item so we go and say, if this item is the cable, then what we're going to do is that say, uh, console, right line, we found your item. And then we want to say, how many of that item are left. So we're going to go and say, out of that cable, now the count is the same count, but subtract one of it. So now, there is Discount left in our inventory. And you strike it. All those vibrations are synchronized because they all got excited at the same time. And so if you look at the pattern. So we want to do the same thing with the other item. We want to say that's what happens with uh if the item is like literally the same thing. If the item is Um, adapter. Just notice that this one needs to be an adapter here. Dot name. Then we just do the same thing. Adapter. Adapter. Otherwise, uh, we don't know what, if we don't have this item, we just go and say else console right line couldn't find this item in our inventory. So I resembled a problem out there in the real world. Uh, I simulated um, that if if I have an item in my inventory, I could resemble that item uh, as in, in an abstract model and push it out there and try to process whatever I want to do with it. At the very end, I want to like halt the program so I get to read um, what happened. So now if I run my program, there we go. 
which item would you like to buy? So if I say Apple, we don't have that item. And then the program halts. Um, now let's try to select an item that we really care about. So let's say cable. So we found your item and now there is 19 left in our inventory of cable. Uh, the real challenge here is to have the program warns us when we are running out. And that's a business requirement. Like, how can we tell the program, hey, give me a warning when I'm about to run out of cables? And how, what's the minimum um, uh, requirement in order for me to start warning, you know, uh, to, to buy more cables? So I could go back to my model here and add something else. Let's say minimum available. And what I'm saying here is that there should be at least minimally available that count in the store before I go order another. So now that I added that, I could go to the cable and say that the minimum available for this cable is there should be at least three left. And the minimum available for the adapter, there should be, let's say, one left. In order for us to test that, let's let's make our cable count here is four. And let's say our adapter count is two. And let's add a condition here that says if the current count equals the minimum. So if we reached the minimum, then go ahead and say we need to order more, more of the name of that item. Same thing goes to the other item. The adapter. We need to order more of this. So let's try this out. So when we order one, there will be only one left of the adapters uh, or when we order one there will be only three left from the cables which will prompt us and warns us hey we need to order more so let's say I am going to buy a cable since I found it there's only three left in our inventory we need to order more cable so that's how a computer program helps you you know manage more effectively and more efficiently your business it enables your business so you don't have you're not going to keep track of each and every item every day if you have let's put this on a on a bigger scale let's say you have um tons and tons and tons of items and um you can't keep track of each and every item every day and at the same time uh, you can't go each and every time someone buys something from your store you can't go back to your inventory and start counting one by one that's a that's an utter and complete waste of time uh, and and it's it's not practical so that's how a computer program can help you uh, enables your business in a more efficient way in order for you to perform your tasks better and computer programs uh, if written the right way and if the business requirements are uh, very specific and very clear and there if there is a clear vision they could save uh, the, the, uh, the tons and tons and tons of money for um, for the person who uses it. So so that's pretty much it. That's programming. Uh, very, very, very little um, mathematics, but more um, more thinking, more how to you know take something out there in the outside world and put it in a form that you can understand. Uh, of course, for the people who are um, uh, more professional programmers out there watching this video, if you are, uh, I know and I understand that there is a way to optimize and make the code smaller and smaller and smaller. But what I'm trying to do here is to actually put out there something that's very verbose, something that's line by line, tell me what to do. So the computer, you know, so the people who watch this video and they're not very familiar with programming would have a clear vision 
of you know what I'm trying to accomplish here, even if they don't have uh, programming experience. Uh, so that'll be all. That that's that's programming. It's it's very simple. There's a reason for it, and and this, there's a reason why it's all over the world, and there's a reason why it's very popular. Uh, that's all. Thank you for watching.